The Man in Line with Andy Wint. to my good afternoon. Welcome to Man in Line. We're open line through till one today. Uh, special tomorrow, it's um, another constituency Man in Line, Aaron Michael. Tomorrow, as the two MHKs will be on Mr. Cannon and Mr. Johnston tomorrow. So if you're in the constituency or you have an interest in it, then Tune in tomorrow. We've got questions and points about the North and what's happening tomorrow. Uh, yes, this report's come out saying that uh, fluoridation on the Isle of Man will be safe and effective. Adding fluoride to the water supply would offer a safe and effective intervention to reduce dental caries. Uh, uh, that's problems with your teeth. A more in-depth exploration of policy will be required. This is the conclusion of a research paper from Public Health Isle of Man looking at the benefits of fluoridation as an oral health measure for the Isle of Man. It was commissioned last year. There was a report from the Social Affairs Policy Review Committee looking into oral health. The committee called for fluoride varnishes to be made available to children, but Timbald instead supported an amendment from Mr Hooper, the health minister, seeking further research into to fluoridation as a more cost-effective alternative. This time last year, 17% of five-year-olds, that's almost one in five five-year-olds, was said to have dental decay, one of the main causes of hospital, ad- hospital admission for that age group. It's an 89-page report, which I have to admit, I haven't read all the pages, but that's the summary that fluoridation show it's a more cost effective way of uh, doing it this has been going on for years i just wonder what your thoughts are on text email call and whatsapp and uh, jed's first with us today hi jed uh hi andy it's quite worrying isn't it that data about the uh, the, the dental issues there um it's not what i phoned up to talk about but i just wish that public health and the schools would have a, a much higher profile campaign just about basic oral hygiene cleaning teeth it's um, not that difficult that, is it jed brush your teeth I, i'm astonished uh, i'd like to see you know messages like that maybe on the school buses you know if they could have, have something just to remind the kids to look after themselves just something a bit more uh, high profile but uh, what i wanted to talk about today was the uh, question from uh, Joni Farragher, uh, Manx Labour Party, this morning yeah. to uh, the Treasury Minister. And it was about the tax cap and the details around that. Now, last week I attended the public meeting at the Legion where Dr. Allenson was excellent, you know, he gave a good presentation. Uh, and I asked him about why the tax cappers had not had any increase uh, in, their, in their rate of tax. And he answered saying that something along the lines that there's some technical issues involved and in the House of Keys today it's become evident that the tax cappers themselves are bomb proof they're untouchable um, the super wealthy are protected because unfortunately they've signed up say for periods of five to ten years so in effect their tax payments are frozen now whereas the rest of us um, are being burgeoned with uh, increases so it's just been an interesting talking point for you for your listeners if anyone's got a view on it um i mean five years can often go very quickly so i mean what do you think we should be doing looking forward jed i mean less less of a, a kind of less of a term for tax cappers or do you think the the general idea the principle of tax capping is uh, fair and equitable well, uh, the Manx Labour Party member, uh, Joanie Farragher, she said um, to the doctor to try and account for the benefits of the tax cappers. And, and, he, and he was he was a, bit, a little bit loose, a bit vague um, in, in some of the good things that they brought to the island. And it'd be worth listening again, really. Uh, I'd recommend the members to do that because he was just citing, oh, there's um, uh, a building on Regent Street and there's a, there's a business here and, and there's another building there. But 
there's nothing definitive. What we'd like to see is some answer as to what the benefits are. Now, I'm not decrying the tax capping um, completely because I think if you can bring people to the Isle of Man who provide employment and provide business and as a condition of them doing that that they have generous benefits I'm all for it but in this instance I think maybe they've dropped the ball here in that the majority of working people in the Isle of Man have got this extra 2% rise and yet the super wealthy is it is it a mistake that they've been given a fixed term for five years? Because it's not really equitable, is it? Uh, what's interesting, I think, uh, the point you make is valid in in that, as you say, when when tax goes up for most people, i.e., when when the financial tide starts to go out things wash up on the beach if you like if I don't want to mix my metaphors but suddenly things become very important and it, you know for many people on the Isle of Man that last 20 quid in the week is really important and perhaps maybe the super wealthy don't quite understand that you know for lots of people that gnawing lump of anxiety about not having enough money on a Thursday night is is a real and, and present fact of life. Well, that excellent report you had this morning on the Salvation Army, and you had some real people, shall we say, talking about their, their lifestyles and the challenges that they have, just exposed that perhaps all is not bright and rosy here on the Isle of Man. And we've got a tough year ahead when these uh, extra charges uh, kick in. Because it's not just in the pay packet it's going to be right across the board it's going to be in retail the things we do businesses are going to be hard pressed and we're not really sensing any appetite by the government to stimulate you know these areas of hospitality um licensing uh, small businesses we're not sensing that there's been any appetite to help those and in the budget last week i certainly didn't hear any narrative to say that they're going to be reaching out to look at those people who are involved in business because let's face it it's going to be the, the pubs the cafes and the restaurants that are going to feel it um in the year ahead uh, just also conflating if you like that we we're just talking about fluoridation and the fact that, that you know they've put aside some money that will go into the health service it will be nice if you know they they could say you, you're talking about you know specific examples that people can relate to and here's another one if they said look we're going to make it an absolute priority that any child under 16 has the best teeth that they can have you know that's a positive because lots of people who are uh, in this situation with with a with a cost of living crisis they'll have problems with teeth and getting a national health dentist now is a job in itself and suddenly they're faced with either having to pay a couple of hundred quid to go to the dentist or suffering with bad teeth absolutely and it's uh, it's a very sad message really that, that we're sending out there because you know private dental plans and dental work for young people is is very costly and expensive but in this day and age where we've got you know the likes of instagram and, and social media and everyone's got uh, a shiny set of gnashes yeah. um it's those that are privileged um are gonna you know have the looks that are able to um, afford the treatment i'm glad you you but, mentioned that jed because i won't mention the particular person's name but i know of somebody who went to Eastern Europe to get their teeth done. And they did, and they paid for it on a credit card, and it all went wrong. They're left now with a big debt on the credit card and a set of teeth that don't quite work. So this, the whole Snapchat generation, Instagram and what have you, with those perfect teeth, um, that sort of advertising and offering people, you know, that perfect life with perfect teeth without brushing really doesn't stack up. Well, you just wonder what sort of pressure parents are being put under, um, you know, by their children if they do need treatment and it's not available on the NHS. Well, where do they go? Because let's face it, if there's only a certain amount of money left at the um, at the end of the, the budget, you know, every month, um, that may not be diverted into, into that kind of... Uh, expenditure so it, it, it it's difficult and it's something that we don't know i don't think we measure you know, the the um, public satisfaction what the outcomes are yeah. from these young people and so forth the psychological 
um, damage, torture. Uh, it's it's a sad state of affairs, really. Well, as sure as anything, I think it's very difficult being a young person, being a teenager now. Certainly, there's so much social pressure and so and social media uh, doesn't help. But I mean, the other fact is, I mean, you can't get away from the fact, Jed, that you can buy a tube of toothpaste and a toothbrush for under three pounds quite easily. And, and of course, uh, diet as well is, is important, and education, and, and what people eat. And again, if we go back to the level of disposable income and what people can afford to buy, the diet may be um, not as good as what it should be when we're at the lower end of the scale. Yeah. So the, the cheap, nasty stuff that can, you know, go in the freezer, uh, you know, that's just been picked up uh, because the sell-by date is uh, is going. Um, all these things have got lots of sugar in them, lots of salt, and, you know, gradually uh, the quality of food, the quality of health, uh, the, the, the diets um, kind of disintegrate in quality. Um, so some challenges really there for anyone who's on a, a low income. OK, all right. I appreciate that, Jed. Thanks for calling. Thank you. Cheers now. 18 minutes past 12. Wendy's on now. Hi, Wendy. Hi there. How are you doing? Good. Yeah, what's on your mind? Um, obviously, you can tell by my accent, I am American, and uh, I grew up in California, and where water was fluoridated, um, fluoridated for a long time. I'm, I'm 61 years old, just to give you an idea. And I have, I was, as a child, I was fed both good and bad food. I, I grew up, I love my, my sweets and those sorts of things as well. Um, but I, I have two fillings. That's all I've ever had. Two cavities in my whole life. And that was largely due to drinking fluoridated water. When uh, I had my own children, I lived in a neighboring state of Oregon, which does not fluoridate its water. And so had to practice really good oral hygiene on my own children. Had to teach them to brush, brush and floss properly. And um, we had a local dentist dentistry chain in Oregon and the neighboring state of Washington. Washington fluoridated their water. Oregon did not. This dental chain, they had about 20 offices, went across both states. And they stated the levels of cavities in people in Washington state where water was fluoridated was a fraction of what was in Oregon. Do you ever remember so, any political discussion or any you know, you know public affairs discussion about fluoridation? Um, you say Oregon didn't, but Washington did. Was it, was it a yes. topic of conversation? It was. It's always a topic of conversation in Oregon. Oregon is a, is a very sort of progressive state. Um, at least at the time it was. And um, when my children were young, the pediatrician offered me, he said, you know, may, you may decide against this. I can prescribe you fluoride drops for your children and you just put them in your, their mouth. We did do that. It's not a, as effective as uh, in the water. But um, it was always sort of a, a, all the dentists will tell you they were against um, not having water fluoridated because they hated seeing children come in and the, the, just the, the condition of their mouths. And, in this, and just to, to think that almost one in five children in the Isle of Man are actually hospitalized due to dental problems, I find that just shocking. Uh, what about the, 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 the simple discipline, Wendy, of brushing your teeth m morning and night? Absolutely. And like I said, I had to do that with my own children in Oregon where water was not fluoridated. So you have to teach them to brush and floss. And, and um, I, I think that needs to be obviously practiced in the home and taught by the dentist actively. And when, the you were, when you were a child then, I mean, do you remember being told to clean your teeth, to brush your teeth morning and night? Uh, I do. Um, obviously, dental hygiene wasn't as big a deal then, you know, in, in, the, in the 60s and the early 70s as it is now. I don't think anybody knew as much about it. I don't even think dental floss was really used back then at that point. But um, obviously being a child, you know, every day when I would walk home from school, I'd go pick up a, you know, a candy bar, a chocolate bar, whatever. So and but still, I, and during that time, I, I had one cavity. I remember having it filled and, and I had one probably when I was about 19 or 20. And that's it. That's all I've had. Wow. Wendy, so, we yeah. appreciate Where are you calling from, Wendy, by the way? I'm in Port Aaron. Good for you. All right. Thanks for being with us today.
sir. Thank you. Bye-bye. I, I appreciate that. And uh, Howard's uh, on with us now. Hi, Howard. Hi, Andy. Uh, yes, I agree with that lady who's just been on. It been, should be taught by the parents. Teach your children. But everywhere you go, there's soft drinks full of sugar. The sweets in eye level for the children. It's discipline. Uh, it's discipline in the children, but everybody else, as I used to say, the whole army's out of step except our Johnny. And everybody, if they fluorinate the water, which I'm led to believe, I'm not a scientist, I'm led to believe it's not the medical fluoride they use. It is a form of, well, it's... When they're manufacturing, it's a byproduct. And, of course, they've got to get rid of this and earn money on it. So uh, they're going to sell it to as many people as they can to make money on the byproduct. It's um, a business acumen, and that's it. But I saw this this morning, funny enough, and then I was in town yesterday, and I was talking to a chap and his wife, and they've been trying to get an appointment with their dentist. They get an appointment, and then it's put back. They get another appointment. That's put back. And what it turned out was, uh, uh, seemingly, that this particular practice is dealing primarily with children. Now, it went through my mind, and this man, that it's building up the numbers to present to the government to give a false reading of what the... Um, the problems are on the island with dental problems with children. It's down to the parents. You see them coming out of every shop with a fistful of sweets. I want, I want. And then, again, the dental hygiene in the home. Is that up to scratch? Um, this, it's not up to the schools to teach them. The parents, they have the children, and it's down to them to look after them. And we were always taught to clean our teeth, and um, our family were always taught to clean their teeth, and still are. But by mass um, introduction of fluoride, it takes the choices away from a lot of people, and they say this is all in the, for the, the younger children. Once they get to a certain age, they can make their own choice yeah. and have fluoride, or they don't. But if they introduce it into the water, nobody gets a choice. They are getting fluoride whether they want it or not. And that's through not just having a drink of water in the morning. It's having tea. It's having, well, the juices, anything. So does the government not listen to the public? They said they do not want it introduced so many times, yeah. but they're determined. They're determined to put this in the water. And that it's either the government putting pressure on or a large company putting pressure on the government. It makes you wonder, doesn't it, Howard? Mm, yeah, well, the Clean Water Act says that you should be have uncontaminated water, clean drink and potable water. Now, if against the will of the people on the island, the government introduced fluoride into the water, that then breaches that contract. And you are not introducing pure water you are introducing a form of contaminated water. And as many people have said on your program over the years, it's not the medical fluoride they're introducing. It's a, a byproduct, I think, it's from the fertiliser industry. So this is down to the parents to teach the children to clean their teeth and look after the teeth. And that magic word, no, when they've got a fistful of sweets, I want, I want. OK, all right. Thanks, Howard. Take care. Bye now. Good to hear from you. In my hand, I've got a copy of uh, the Monus Herald uh, newspaper, the Manx newspaper, Monus Herald, that came out in 1956. Actually, it's July 24th, 1956. I'll just read you a, a short part of the headline. It says, New move to save teeth of Manx schoolchildren. This is July 24th, 1956. The addition of fluoride to the island's water supply would in five years begin to relieve pressure on an overworked school dental service. <laughs> Remember when we had that? It would cost £2,000 to install and would cost £200 a year. This would be uh, Douglas Corporation, uh, the local government board, I think, would have paid it. 
concern, this it goes on, the concern of the numbers of young children who have needed dental treatment is expressed by Dr. Stephen Cullen, principal school medical officer, in his annual report to the Alaman Education Authority. Dr. Cullen states there would appear to be no doubt that fluoridation of the island's water supplies would help preserve the teeth of the children and reduce decay by between 50 and 60 percent. This is 1956. Mrs. K. E. Smith, who, uh, who is the uh, principal school dental officer, said that it's now an accepted fact that when fluorides found naturally in drinking water, the inhabitants of the district have less dental decay than those living in districts where it is absent. A report on fluoridation has already been compiled by Douglas Corporation's water engineer, Harry Cannell, and submitted to the Water Board, the Water Committee, who've uh, referred the matter to the local government board. Ah, the old LGB. It's understood that the cost of the installation will be about £2,000. The annual expedition uh, expenditure is uh, £200 a year. Widespread tests carried out for 10 years in the United States and Canada have shown that when fluoride in the proportions of one part per million is added to the drinking water of a district which had previously found contained no trace, tooth decay is reduced by 50%. 1956. Plus ça change. Preparing to leave school soon and thinking about the future, or maybe looking to reskill. University College Isle of Man offer a variety of full and part time further education level courses, or earn while you learn through an apprenticeship. Courses include engineering, art, sports, hairdressing, childcare, and business, plus science, forensics, animal management, healthcare, and more. Earn valuable qualifications and skills that will set you up for a successful future. Visit ucm.ac. To find your perfect course. It's National Bed Month. And at B&B Furniture, our fully trained, friendly bed specialists are waiting to help you find your perfect night's sleep. From over 50 beautiful beds to suit every budget, all with 0% finance too. And just for bed month, there are extra savings on every bed, plus a full bedding pack, duvet and pillows, fitted sheet, duvet cover and pillowcases. Now's the perfect time to treat yourself to the bed your body deserves at B&B Furniture, Snugborough Trading Estate. Oh, problems with your spine and posture can have a serious effect on your quality of life, but a Line for Life Spine Clinic could help. If you're suffering from back pain, neck pain, headaches, their holistic scientific approach could find and treat the root cause of the problem for long-lasting relief. Whew. Touch Align for Life now or call 629 4 Align for Life, the island's spine and posture clinic, here to make life better. Have you been invited to take part in the Household Income and Expenditure Survey? It's one of the most important surveys for our island because the information you provide is vital data for our island's financial planning. It helps us calculate our VAT revenue from the UK. Plus, it gives us a better understanding of the financial strains on residents so we can support those who are struggling. March is the last month you can take part. So visit gov.im forward slash H-I-E-S now. Tonight at 6 here on Manx Radio, join Kiri Kermit and myself, Simon Clark, for Countryside. We hear from the Isle of Man Beekeepers Federation President Harry Owens about the Crosby Apery auction. And we also catch up with the Young Farmers pre the Young Farmers concert. I catch up with Alan Hiscox, who's the Director of Safety at the British Horse Society, to tell me more about their Dead Slow campaign. That's all in Countryside tonight here on Manx Radio at 6 o'clock. And don't forget, you can download and subscribe to the podcast for free at manxradio.com The Man in Line with Andy Wint Half past 12 it is uh, if you're looking to meet your MHK this weekend in Ramsey and Douglas Central you can uh, this coming Saturday the 9th uh, Ramsey constituency Dr Allenson and Laurie Hooper will have uh, a political surgery I think it's every second Saturday so here we go the 9th of March meet and talk to Dr Allenson and Laurie Hooper at the first floor of Ramsey Town Hall in Parliament Square 10 till midday it's a drop in format simply pitch up if you have something specific to talk to Dr Allenson and Mr Hooper about Ramsey constituency on Saturday and also Saturday Douglas Central I mean, HKs and Corlett and Chris Thomas will be at All Saints Church Hall on Alexander Drive at the junction of uh, Selborne Road there between 2 and 4 if you want to see um, Mrs Corlett and Mr Thomas for Douglas Central and uh, it's uh, Richard with us now hi Richard hi how you doing fella you alright good yeah what's on your mind 
I may see um, Chris Thomas at two. What, when was that again? Could you just tell me that notice that again? It's Saturday, every second Saturday of the month, Douglas Central, and call it and Chris Thomas, All Saints Church Hall. Whereabouts is All Saints Church? It's uh, well. It's the one that's been sold. I think they're turning it into a gym. You know the old tin tabernacle. It's the one on Alexander oh, Drive. Yeah. There, yeah. I'm with you. Well, okay. I just think about fluoridation. It just seems to be a bit of smoke screening for the Canaanite government, which nobody wants in. Um, I was just thinking it's just a consultation. The main problem that we have on consultations is, can you hear me okay? Loud and clear, Richard. Uh, the main problem we have on consultations is that we've go- got no app for consultations. And I would have thought with the six to 800 you know, member cabinet office, they would have had an app. For consultations, so we get notifications on our phone if if we need to be consulted on something because we've no referendum agreement, have we? Interesting, but I mean, if you were going to do it by app, they'd have to you'd have to be kind of verified and you'd have to give your details. Would you be Would you be happy doing that? No, you wouldn't. Not on a consultation, you can do it anonymously. Well, if you do it anonymously, how do you know that the people are all on the Isle of Man? It could, we could suddenly get 500 people from across or the other side of the world uh, with an oh, because opinion. It's because, it's because you're crowdsourcing ideas. It's the idea of crowdsourcing. There's nothing wrong with a good, uh, a good idea as long as it's crowdsourced. So I mean, do you think, do you is, think well, we let should... Let me finish, let me finish, let me finish. I think the idea is that... It's not what it's not where it comes from. It's what's said. It's not who said it. It's actually what's being said. So if it's a good idea, I think you should, you know, take that on board because we're out of ideas in government and we need more and more and more. So do you think we should fluoridate our water? Um. Well, personally, no. I don't think we should. But I think the idea is that it should be an app. I think we should have a consultation app. Is that understood? It is, yeah. As I say, I, I, I don't quite understand when you say that if the ideas come from here, there and everywhere, they're going to be relevant to the Isle of Man. Well, because that's the idea of crowdsourcing. So what happens if anybody, somebody who's from across or the other side of the world doesn't understand the Isle of Man dynamic? There are many people, Richard, who don't even know the Isle of Man isn't in the UK. Well, maybe they do know the dynamic. Maybe they're in Cyprus or something like that. You know, how, how do we know? It's a very, you know, I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to say it's an ignorant point of view, but it's a very kind of, we have to get as much ideas in as possible to make a, a good governance issue. Yeah, well, well, there are lots of people in England who think that we should be part of the UK and paying their tax. I, I'm not going to be pushed on that, mate. I'm sorry. So you don't think that point of view is valid? I'm not going to be pushed on that point of view. But you would let people from off the Isle of Man submit ideas to the Isle of Man government? I think we need as many ideas as possible. We need an app for consultation and the six to 800 cabinet office that they've got there are persons. Six to 800, I think we should have an app on consultation is my point. OK, I appreciate that, Richard. Thanks for being with us. Julian's on now. Hi, Julian. Hi, Andy. How you doing? Fine, and yourself? Good, good. Uh, Yeah, just a quick one. Uh, Your previous caller about a consultation. Uh, Funnily enough, in America at the moment, there is a massive class action against fluoridation. Um, An easy website to look at is fluoridealert.org. A Michael Connett, lead attorney, um, has been doing a big court case over the last two weeks uh, with senior district judge in San Francisco, Edward Chen, and he's now doing his deliberations after hearing from a lot of uh, experts as to what's been going on behind the scenes with fluoridation in states that do it. Because um, it's quite an interesting, your earlier call of the lady from California, um, you can see what's going on in each state. And one of the sort of things that was, was interesting was that certain states that have fluoridation have got problems with sleeping. Um, and there was some years ago uh, a study which found calcification of the pineal gland, which makes melatonin, which is your sleep hormone. So there are certain um, concerns about the fact of what is going on when you start drinking lots of fluoridated water, uh, especially when you think, and I think Claire Barber alluded to this, um, there is a limit of 0.7 parts per million of fluoridated water in these states and and places in the world that do it Um, but there's no warning on any packaging about food that's 
that we're taking in, say, from Tesco, we don't know if the cattle or the agricultural produce has been watered with fluoridated water. Well, not, so on, we not only that, but the salad packs that we get from uh, uh, off-island supermarkets, presumably they may have been washed with fluoridated water. That's right. Um, now, the other... Because you're talking about mass medication, um, and there's, especially with this court case that's been heard, fetal brain development, neurotoxicity in children, lower IQ, um, especially when you think as well that this is kind of a convenient way of getting rid of hectofluorosilicic acid, which is the waste product from aluminium production and also fertilizer production. This is not the pure medical grade um, fluoride that you have in toothpaste, which, I mean, by the way, on the packaging says, do not swallow. Yeah. So you have to, <laughs> you know... The, the but, but you're not suggesting that, that, that any government would knowingly go into putting fluoride into the water that was unsafe, surely? Well, this is why they're having this big class action in America. Um, so the deliberations are currently in hand, and if you look up... Uh, this one, you can actually see the video of evidence being given by all the uh, um, scientists over the last uh, two, two and a half weeks that, that it's been going on. Um, but, you know, it, it's, it's mass medication. And, you know, don't forget, you can say that certain states in America do it, but I think 98% of Europe doesn't do it and refuse to do it because of earlier tests in the 80s, 90s and 2000s. So there's a reason why we're not doing it. Uh, it's, it's very, very limited for the for the places that actually do it. So how do I mean? But, so let's just accept the fact that uh, we do have a problem on the Isle of Man and elsewhere, for that matter, as a problem with young people's teeth. Some young people don't clean their teeth often enough. They do consume fizzy drinks, and whether it's sweet fizzy drinks or carbonated water, the acid will attack the enamel. So how do we get that message over to people who palpably aren't paying the slightest? his bit of attention well the other thing is you said the problem can we have numbers i mean if we're talking about a handful of kids that are not doing their teeth properly that's hardly a reason to medicate the entire island because i'm not keen on having fluoridated water yeah. or you know even if you're watering your own plants and growing your own food that fluoride especially being hexafluorosilicic acid in it is going to come up in the roots and it's going to go in the food that you're growing yourself so you're kind of being Unless you're going to start you know, like using um, bottled water to, um, to to water your own plants, it, it's kind of you know it's um, it, it's a it, it's a mass medication. It that's, seems that's like uh, it seems, Julian, like because the government keeps coming back with this to us. They think, do you think they're just try- knocking on enough doors, hoping that one will open eventually? Well, yeah, I mean, you know, quite often over the years, um, you know, it's kind of like chip, chip, chip away, and then no. And then you do it a bit later, and then you, you slightly change the, the voting percentage, and you just keep chipping away till you get what you want. But, you know, as, um, as our friend Dewan has said, you know, follow the money. You know, what if it's going to be hectofluorosilicic acid as what's been going to be put in at Ingebrek in places? That is known as a toxic version, an even more toxic version of, of fluoride. So can we know if it is that? And can we know exactly what percentage of the island is going to benefit from this? Okay, all right. Appreciate that, Jew, and thanks for being with us. Thanks, Andy. Cheers. Good to hear from you. And uh, Tony B is on now. Hi, Tony. Hi, Andy. How are you doing? I'm fine, thanks. How are your teeth today? My teeth are fine. I brush them every day, twice a day, actually. Most days, anyway. And I sometimes jet them as well and floss them when I need to. Um, My issue, I think, with this whole fluoridation idea is that once again the government instead of looking at a problem and saying oh we can see what's wrong here we haven't got enough dentists they're finding another solution to that because they haven't got enough dentists so what else should we do and the answer is well we'll fluoridate the water that will fix everything and you're going to end up with older people and a lot of younger people with health issues being sicker So how's that going to help? It's not a good thing to fluoridate the water. Um, I personally would have to get some filters and filter it out if they start putting fluoride in it because it's toxic. And it stays in your body. Uh, It's very hard to get rid of. 
Um, and the other thing is that who asked us whether we should do this? Where's the government... Who, who stood up at the last election and said, oh, I think we should fluoridate the water? I can't recall. I interviewed every candidate and I can't mm-hmm. recall anybody who said it's a, it's a priority or we should do it. So now it's a priority that we fluoridate the water because there are loads of children who are sick. Which children are being hospitalised with teeth problems and how many are there? I mean, I, I, I find it's hard to believe that in this day and age... We aren't putting the responsibility for brushing teeth back to where it belongs, which is on the parents of the child. Time was, of course, we had a school dental service here. There was a dentist at Balakameen, and and, and many other schools had dentists here, there and everywhere. And it was an accepted fact that schools would provide, or the education service would provide, a school dentist. And, And that went, presumably that was cost. Well, how much do you think it's going to put cost to put fluoride in the water, bearing in mind who's going to be doing it, the DOI? Um, how much will that cost? And what's going to happen when they've got loads of people with, with issues in their body because they're over-fluorided? You know, naturally, within water, typically, with, if it's from the ground, there will be some fluoride in it. But you're talking about multiplying that multifold by adding it, and it's not the same as natural fluoride. Like, like as you've just been told by Julian, it's toxic. It's a toxic chemical they want to get rid of somewhere. So bearing in mind, then, the government are telling us that they want young people's teeth to be better. Uh, And where do you think... I mean, uh, it was Wendy earlier on said that there were dentists in in Oregon, I think, that provide fluoride drops for parents. If if parents wanted fluoride, they could take it orally. You can do that. And you can go and get buy some fluoride toothpaste. And you don't have to... If, somebody, if a child says, oh, I don't want my toothbrush, I've got sore gums, all you do is take the toothpaste, put it on your finger and rub it round on the top of, your, of your, your teeth and it'll do exactly the same as if you were brushing them. It's easy enough for a dentist, for the government, it should be extremely easy to get a dentist to go to schools and start doing lectures about what, how your teeth work. But the issue is it's not just about brushing them. It's also about what you stick in your body. So if you look at the diets of a lot of young children, they're not very good. And that is down to the parents and the government not saying, if you've got bad teeth, don't eat this, don't do that, don't do the other. Where have you seen one notice anywhere that says, encourage your children to drink water rather than a fizzy drink. Yeah, I mean, I'm not saying this is typical, but when I drive to the radio station about half past eight in the morning, I often see young people in school uniform coming out of shops with a can of fizzy drink in one hand and a bar of chocolate in the other hand. I'm not saying that's typical, but it does happen. And surely, uh, you know, those young children are then going to go into school and even if they clean their teeth at lunchtime, it's going to be three hours with that swashing around their mouth. I, I'm not disagreeing, Andy, but the, how, do you, how do you go ahead and educate children to do that? That's down to biology within the classroom, and you, you get them there and you say, right, this is a tooth, I'll drop it in some coke, and at the end of the lesson we'll see what it's like, yeah. shall we? The, we? We're not doing anything about that. What we're doing is teaching them about sex education. It's, it's ludicrous, absolutely ludicrous. This is down to the education system and lack of parents because parents nowadays are so busy that they don't have time to do anything with children all right okay tony thanks for calling today i'm not being i'm not i'm not against people who are struggling but i am against being mass medicated by something that's toxic all right thanks for that oh andy andy how do i go out is there a is there a consultation out there that i can go and log on and tell them my my opinions (laughs) <laughs> not that I know of but you can call well, your MHK no, any time and tell they, them they, they won't listen anyway so that's fine ok <laughs> thanks for that Andy Wind, the nation station Men's Radio how do you really get to feel healthier eat healthier 
ShopRite's healthy choice ranges make it easy and truly enjoyable. All over our chillers and freezers, food that even sounds better for you. Like the Gym Kitchen protein-packed frozen meals, Plant Chef plant-based chilled and frozen food, and free-from ranges across the store from pasta to cereal. Better for you doesn't have to mean boring anymore. Try our range of healthier alternatives. Available now at ShopRite. No matter how much you need to dig or how much you want to dump, Fox Group Isle of Man offer an extensive range of plant hire, long-term lease and sales. We're the island's exclusive supplier for Louis Gong excavators with immediate delivery. Our machinery comes with a complete service package with finance plan options. Call John on 458946 to discuss your plant needs. Fox Group Isle of Man, part of the Fox Group of Companies. Feeding friends and family with the finest the island has to offer. The Forge Smokehouse and Grill Santon. Fresh Manx produce marinated, slowly cooked, grilled and smoked to perfection right here and served in a gorgeous setting. Just walk in any time, no booking needed. Parties, family gatherings and weddings, the perfect venue for any occasion. And don't forget our large marquee for any event. Visit theforge.im and see... At Isle of Man Energy, we're excited to offer our customers the Alpha E-Tech Efficient Hybrid Gas Boiler and Heat Pump Combination. This state-of-the-art hybrid boiler causes minimal disruption to your existing heating system, making it simple to upgrade. Priced from just £65 a month and with six-year warranty as standard, which can be extended to 10 years, what are you waiting for? Register for a free consultation at islandmanenergy.im Journey to a Dream, the podcast that takes you behind the handlebars of motorcycle racing's ultimate challenge, Roads on the Isle of Man. I didn't realise normal people could race motorbikes. I thought it was something on TV or for superheroes. From the thrill of the speed to the allure of the island's mystique, join me, Beth Espy, as we unravel the passion that drives these riders to push the limits. Childhood dream, you know, it's something I've always wanted from since being a kid. Journey to a Dream, available now at manxradio.com or your usual podcast provider the man in line with andy Witt. 11 minutes before one peter's on now hi peter oh hello andy it's peter mercott here and i'm going to change what i was going to talk about i was going to talk about something a bit complicated but there isn't really time to talk about that so i'm going to just follow on from the discussion you're having about the fluoridization of water yeah. uh, which um, is obviously continuing with that uh, long before I came to the Isle of Man, I used to be deputy head of a primary school. And listening to everything that's been said, it recalled the fact that when I was deputy head, I remember we used to hire every year a film from the local authority, which um, had quite a number of suitable educational films. And one of them was about um, healthy teeth and so on. It was extraordinarily well made. It had been made many years before, but it was not dated. And I always used to like the looks of the faces of the children when they looked at some of the things that they showed. They showed of what the consequences would be of not looking after your teeth. And I always remember one year when I showed this, when we put the uh, projector off, one of the lads looked at me and smiled and he said, I'm going to look after my teeth and be very careful as to what I eat and so on. So the message came home. And to my mind, that is one of the ways in which this can be addressed. I'm totally against the fluoridization of water. As you've already alluded to, and it's been said many times, it isn't the answer because, quite frankly, a lot of the children don't drink much water anyway, so it doesn't. So it's really uh, going in the wrong direction. The answer lies in this particular case of giving appropriate education in the schools. It does work because... I was part of that a long time ago. I can remember the film. Um, sometimes my wife and I, we talk about it. It starts off with an orchestra, with um, a, a choir of 100 people, and it asks people to leave who've got, oh, I don't know, dentures and partial dentures and so on. And in the end, there's only two people singing, singing in this choir, and it goes on from there. 
uh, extraordinarily well made, very clear and uh, very effective. And I would say that's one of the answers. You can't expect the whole population to have to um, take this fluoride just because there are a number of people who aren't looking after their teeth. You need to address those people, give them the information. At the end of the road, there is such a thing called human responsibility and uh, direct them to how that human responsibility is exercised. Interesting. And uh, it's funny, I'd, I'd forgotten it. You've reminded me a lot of people, whereas years and years ago, it was very common for people to just get a glass and drink a, a glass of tap water. Nowadays, with the advent of bottled water, everybody seems entranced with paying a pound for a bottle of water and drinking it that way. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. But uh, there's the answer. I, I expect the film's long since uh, Oh, it'll be somewhere on YouTube. I've, I've no doubt if you look for it on YouTube, it'll be there. Well, if you're just inventive enough, you could, fi- you could devise a programme um, uh, of healthy living. And um, I do not see how the state should intrude any more than that. At the end of the road, provide the necessary information. But I don't see why we should have mass fluoridism fluoridization and like your other callers i am wholeheartedly against it because it's not the answer okay thanks for being with thank us thank you good thank to hear you. from you as a men- as a, a dental nurse uh, more needs to be done on better oral health education access to dentists regular checkups it comes down to choice if you wish to use fluoride crack on if you don't then don't mass medication isn't the answer says whatsapp 152 educate the children on their diets and dental hygiene adding this to our water paul paul calls it calls it a poison uh, is not the answer uh, concerning the number of people needing fillings and hospital treatment is there any way to determine if they were receiving regular dental checkups we are all manx and yet neither my wife nor i nor my children or grandchildren are able to get a checkup on the nhs this is disgraceful yet they're raising tax and national insurance says andy mike's with us now hi mike Hi Andy, how are you doing? Good, thanks. Good. You've, you've actually made part of the point that I was uh, wanting to make whilst I've been waiting on the line, but I think we're on the right lines today uh, with, with what the callers are saying. We're trying to uh, tackle a problem that we actually created ourselves or the government created, aren't we? Howard is right in the way that he says it should be the, pe- the parents' responsibilities. That's in an ideal world. Now, when I was at school and you were at school, like you said before, we had the school dentists. I was lucky. My parents sent me to the bathroom twice a day, mornings and evenings, to clean my teeth. Some parents did but the problems were caught at the school dentist. So, you know, we've, we've, we've done away with the school dentist. Problems aren't being caught early enough. And now we're talking about fluoridate, fluoridization of the water to solve the, uh, the issues that we've created ourselves. You know, it's, it's tackle the problem at source, educate the children in the schools, get school dentists back and get the teeth checked within the schools. And it would probably bring the, the, the waiting list down on the uh, for, for national health dentists as well at the same time, wouldn't it? OK. All right. Thanks, Mike. All right, thanks, Mike. Bye-bye. All right, it's five to one on Manx Radio. Here's a note in from Joe, who just said, instead of lumping everybody together, we can introduce NHS fluoride tablets and target the people that want fluoride. Uh, most, pe- most that need healthier teeth drink less tap water anyway, so it's not even targeting those that need better teeth because they won't drink the water. Fluoride works on teeth, but ingested, it's known to reduce cognitive function. That's Joe's uh, view there. Also regarding Wendy's call, she compared... Uh, anecdotal situation in one state to another state. Uh, thanks for that. Good to hear from you. And a message in from Sally, who just said, at my school, they used to get, j- wheel out giant teeth that were about the size of cereal boxes and then pull them apart and show us the construction of teeth. It frightened me to death, but I really, really brushed my teeth after that. When the man in line's not on air, call Manx Radio to leave your opinion for broadcast on 682 63 one. Uh, so tomorrow we're looking at Aaron Michael uh, halfway through this administration. We're going around all the constituencies and talking to the MHKs. Tomorrow, Alfred Cannon and Tim Johnston, the Aaron Michael MHKs, will be talking and uh, receiving your calls and comments about the north of the Isle of Man and really what are the opportunities, the problems, how is it living? If you're in Aaron Michael and you have something to say, by all means, call, text, email and WhatsApp. On Friday, we're going to be live from Ramsey Pier. There's 
uh, a by-election on Thursday evening, so hopefully we'll get the winner of that commissioner's by-election uh, on the pier. And lots of people, lots more people, including if you want to pop along to Ramsey Pier on Friday, we'd love to see you. The kettle will be on. There'll be some cake there for you. I can't promise to brush your teeth. I'm just hoping you do so afterwards. So, Alfred Cannon and Tim Johnson tomorrow from Aaron Michael and Ramsey Pier live on Friday. Just a quick note in, uh, and I was going to mention this earlier, but if you're having problems, if you're a business and you're having problems with the postal service to the Isle of Man, we'd like to hear from you. Email maninline at manxradio.com. I've had quite a few businesses get in touch with me saying they simply can't rely on selling online, getting supplies from the UK and making sure that deliveries are sent off on time. So we'd like some information. If that is you, if you have a business that relies on the post office, if you'd like to get in touch and tell us more. Really appreciate it. Thanks to Chris Quirk on the phones today. W-I-N-T.